couple of uh, things I want to tell you about Mr. Martino before I turn the microphone over to him. Um, in addition to authoring two novels for young adults, he is also the president of Live and, uh, excuse me, Listen and Live Audio in Union City, New Jersey, which is, which is an audio book publishing company. He has also worked as a sports reporter and staff writer for both newspapers and magazines. And he, furthermore, he was a, um, both a high school and collegiate wrestler and has coached youth wrestling. He's written and published two novels, Pins and Over the End Line, which we have available in the IMC. Um, although the characters in the novels are wrestlers and soccer uh, players respectively, the novels are more than just about those sports. They're about many different teen issues that um, you know, students face on a daily basis. So if you would please join me in welcoming Mr. Martino. Um, first, let me offer a very sincere thanks to uh, Mrs. March and uh, Mrs. Johnson for helping to organize today's appearance. Uh, we've been going back and forth, I guess, with emails for uh, since the fall. Um, so I've been thinking about this for, for quite a while, and I'm thrilled that, that, uh, that we're finally here. Uh, just as, as a side note, uh, you all should be very proud of your school. When I drove up today, I thought I was driving into a, a college campus. It is completely impressive. A little bit of uh, background about myself. Uh, I grew up in, in Short Hills, which is up in Essex County, North Jersey. I graduated from uh, Milburn High School. I went on to get my degree at Duke University, and later after that I got my my MBA from uh, the Marshall School of Business at the University of Southern California. Right now I live in, in Jersey City, which is just over the river from Manhattan. Um, today is, is a, again, a huge thrill for me. Uh, as, as I just mentioned, I'm a New Jerseyan born and bred. And long ago, before Pin, my first novel, was published, um, 15, 20 years ago when I was really just starting out in writing. As you would imagine, I would run into writer's block and have difficulties putting anything uh, interesting on, on paper or typing into my computer. Uh, so during those times, as motivation, I would imagine what it would be like to have a novel published and because of it be able to come and speak to students in my home state like you guys and talk about my novel and about writing and the craft of writing. So I, again, this is a, a, a huge thrill for me, and to me it's the best part of, of having published a novel. A little later in, in my presentation, uh, I'll give you an opportunity to, to ask any questions you have about the novels or about writing or anything else you want to ask me. Um, but before then, I, I want to talk a little bit about why I think this is a tremendously exciting time to, to be a writer or to be working on uh, the, the craft of writing. Because of the internet, it primarily, uh, there is access to a tremendous amount of, of resources that 15, 20 years ago when I started out, or you know, even longer ago when I was your age, just simply weren't available. For example, and it's something for, for you guys who do want to be writers to think about. Uh, on the internet, you can find out just about anything you want about your favorite author or writer. You can go to their website. You can read bios on them. Uh, you can send emails to your favorite authors. And <coughs> In fact, I get emails from, from people who have read my novels and just want to comment, either good or bad. or ask me a question about getting published or you know anything I get those emails all the time and quite often we have uh, a dialogue by email um, going back and forth you can also find uh, criticisms and reviews and critiques of just about anything that that's been written whether it's an article essay or novel and I think this is important because it allows you uh, to go online if you have a particular novel that that you enjoy or, or maybe even that you're having difficulty with and you want to try to understand what the uh, author was getting at. There's more than enough uh, resources on, on the internet to give you an idea of, uh, of just about anything, whether the author 
uh, whether there's a theme you didn't understand or a plot line or a metaphor that he used, anything along those lines. The internet also allows you to put together uh, an online writing group. Now I'm going to be discussing this a little bit more in the seminar after lunch, but I, I do want to mention it now that the internet allows you to send your material to someone across town, across state, across the country, across the world, and have them send material to you, and have you guys, have the, the two of you go back and forth critiquing uh, your material. You can also find, obviously, on the internet, a number of how-to articles uh, dealing with the, the art and the, the craft of writing, whether it's you want to understand better um, themes versus plots, using metaphors, character development, anything along those lines, you can find it on the, the internet. And perhaps most importantly, uh, the internet allows you to, to do a tremendous amount of research which would be difficult to do otherwise. And it also can be a source of uh, a, a, a spark or a, a germ of an idea for a story or a novel that you might have in mind. At the same time, the internet allows you to work on the craft of writing uh, inexpensively and almost immediately and have your writing be seen by a potentially limitless number of people. And what I mean by that is you could start your own blog, you could create your own website and put up your writing. You can submit material to online magazines and to contests much more readily than you could do in the past. You can work on your writing by uh, submitting reader's comments to articles, particularly news articles, and you can obviously also send in letters to the editor. These are all opportunities for you to work on your writing and put it out there for other people to read, which is really very important. Now, what I've done today is, my, one of my goals here is to, to sort of broaden your, your horizon on good writing and where we find it. And what I mean by good writing is simply writing that, that educates or inspires, or entertains, or challenges you. So I've brought six samples today of writing that we're going to going to go over. You may disagree with uh, some or all of them. Uh, that's that's certainly up to you. But most importantly, I just want you to see that when we talk about writing, we're not talking about exclusively novels or short stories. That there's really a much wider range of formats. Uh, that encompasses the whole idea of writing. And I'm going to need some audience participation here, so please don't be, don't be shy. Uh, someone raise their hand and, and read this one. Can you read it from back there? Yeah. Okay, stand up. And what's your first name? Colby. Colby? Please read it loud for the rest of us. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people, people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another to assume among the powers of the earth. The separate and equal situation, a station to which the laws of nature of nature's God entitle them, a descent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which him, I can't say, compel them to the separation. Good, thank you. Um, can anyone tell me what this is from? Very good. Very good. Um, and the reason I chose this, and the reason I chose this, this uh, and another example I had was for the, the preamble to the Constitution, is that um, I think it's important to, to just understand that this is one of the, the more famous and, and certainly one of the most important doc government documents ever written by man. And, and yet the, the writing is, is really very wonderful. Okay. There's, there's a certain rhythm to, uh, to this section in particular. Um, and anyone tell me who, who drafted the, the declaration primarily? 